Hello, I'm Caitlin Jenkins, the Family Law Vlogger, and today on the vlog, we're going to be talking about legal parentage. I'm joined with one of my expert colleagues from our children and family team at Mills and Reeve, Rosemary Drury. Welcome back to the vlog, Rosemary. Thanks, Caitlin. It's great to be back. So we've, we've had a conversation previously about various myths to do with surrogacy. And what we thought in this blog we would do is focus a little bit more about donors and the use of donors in, in parentage. So I suppose, first of all, what sort of donors do you mean? What do you mean by um, using a donor? Um, so using a donor is where a couple or individual might use either a sperm donor or an egg donor uh, to help conceive a child. So it could be either. Could be either. From the point of view of legal parentage, though, um, sperm donors uh, cause more um, issues or a potential more complexities than using an egg donor. OK, OK, so we need to bear that in mind. So I suppose the first question is, if you have a donor, is the donor a legal parent? Um, so it's actually a really complicated question to answer. Um, starting point is whoever carries the child um, is the legal mother. So it doesn't matter whether a donor is used or not. Who then is the other legal parent will depend on whether that person is married or in a civil partnership or not. Um, and if they're not, um, it will then depend on whether they've conceived, for example, at a UK licensed fertility clinic, a fertility clinic abroad, or perhaps at home using home insemination. Um, so it's really important for anyone thinking in particular of using a sperm donor um, to take legal advice, look at their individual situation um, to see who's going to be a legal parent at the end of the day and whether or not someone that they're intending to be a donor could be a legal parent. Absolutely. So you really need to have those conversations and know what the situation is at the outset before getting into this sort of donor situation. OK, so then a question about the donor. If a child is the product of, of this approach, does the donor have a right to have any relationship with any child or children who are born? And um, so the donor doesn't have a right to have a relationship with the children, um, but the children may have a right to have a relationship with their donor. So what can happen, although it is relatively rare, is that donors can make applications to court to see a child. Um, and the focus of the court is all on that child's right um, to know their biological heritage. And it's very much an emphasis not on replacing or um, having the same role as the parents of that child, but about that child's right to get to know where they've come from. Um, so it is possible for donors to make those applications, which is why it's really important that people think carefully about these situations in advance. So it's not even necessarily just the prospective uh, parents who wish to parent the child or parent who wishes to have the child and not bring, bring the child up, but actually the donor really needs to understand what they're entering into and what their obligations may or may not be or, or, or what could happen in the future. Okay. Absolutely. And we talked about the situation here. Can you go abroad or can you conceive at home if you're using a donor? Or does that go back to your point about a registered uh, UK licensed clinic? Um, so it's perfectly possible to go abroad or conceive at home uh, using a donor. But what individuals and couples need to think really carefully about is who's going to be a legal parent in that situation. Um, if you're not married or in a civil partnership, and you conceive at home using a donor or you go abroad for treatment, then um, you won't be the sole legal parent. Technically, your donor could be a legal parent um, and your partner wouldn't be a legal parent. So it's really important uh, for individuals and couples to think carefully about those sorts of situations. And um, it is possible, though, that if they go to a UK licensed fertility clinic to conceive, that they'll be the sole legal parent or then partner can be the other legal parent of the child. And um, so really important that they take advice when they're thinking about their options about conceiving. OK, now turning then just to some examples, I suppose, as with all of our work in the, the Mills and Marie family and children team, confidentiality, confidentiality is key, uh, very important in uh, personal circumstances for people. So confidentiality with obviously is, is primary. But there are certain cases I know you've been involved in that have been reported so that, that certain information about them is publicly available. So we can sort of touch on those without breaching any 
their confidentiality concerns. So you've had some cases, I think, reported cases where there's been a problem with the paperwork at a fertility clinic or some of the fertility clinics. And, and what sort of issues has that raised? What sort of um, what happened in those cases? Yes, that's right. So there have been a number of reported cases over the past couple of years, several of which I've dealt with, where um, unmarried couples have used donor sperm at a licensed UK clinic. Um, now, there's certain paperwork that needs to be completed um, for the uh, father or second woman to be a legal parent. Um, and it's really important that's properly completed uh, before the treatment takes place. Um, unfortunately, what's happened is that in some cases, the paperwork either simply hasn't been there or it's subsequently gone missing or it's been incorrectly completed. And that's created uncertainty over legal parentage. And sometimes this has arisen several years after the child's been born, um, in some cases where the parents have separated, um, which means that they may not necessarily both be on board um, with what should be done to sort things out. Um, and fortunately, in nearly all of the cases, the court's been able to make something which we call a declaration of parentage, which is saying that the person who was intended to be a legal parent when this treatment took place is in fact a legal parent. Um, there is one situation where unfortunately the court though wasn't able to do that. So it's really important that if people are going for treatment at a licensed fertility clinic, um, that they make sure that all of their paperwork is completed properly uh, and keep a clear record of it themselves as well. So that's clearly going to be one of your top tips, I suspect, for people in this situation. I suppose, are there any other top tips for anyone looking to conceive with a donor more generally? So I think um, what I would say is people need to think carefully about where they're conceiving, okay? Um, in particular, those situations with an individual or unmarried couple conceiving at home or at a clinic abroad um, because of the implications about who will be a legal parent as a result. Um, I'd also say that if people are using a known donor, then um, it'd be really important to have a donor agreement, setting out what everyone expects, um, making clear what everyone's expectations are about future involvement in that child's life. Um, whilst a donor agreement isn't binding, it's a really helpful and useful record for the future of what everyone intended going into this. Um, and lastly, I'd say it's really important for anyone thinking of using a donor to think about what they'll tell their children and when in the future about their biological origins. Absolutely. So there's lots to think about here, both from the practical, from the emotional, from the paperwork, from the law, and obviously from the perspective of what you actually say to, to the little person or little people that, that are created from this process. Rosemary, as ever, that was really helpful and very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, as we always say on the vlog, we can only give general information and if you need specific information or advice about your circumstances, then please do contact Rose Marie, whose details will be under the bottom of this blog, or, or via the Mills and Reeve website, or one of my other colleagues in our specialist Mills and Reeve family and children team. But for now, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>